Hello, I'm Kurt Lidke, Executive Director of Klamath Film, and you just watched Love in Dangerous Times, a very apropos love story for these weird, bizarre times that never seem to be ending. Uh, with us is the film's director, producer, and major cast members, John Garcia, the director, Ian Stout, who played Daryl, Tiffany Groban, who played Sorrell, and Steve Gardner, the film's producer. Thank you, everyone, for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you. Well, I, I'm not sure if it's ironic or very meta that we're all meeting over Zoom to discuss a film about meeting people over Zoom. But uh, how long did it, did it take being stuck indoors at the start of the pandemic before it was decided, screw it, we might as well make a movie about all this nonsense. We can only bake so much sourdough before we need to actually work again. Yeah, um, didn't take long. I mean, pretty much, you know, as, as storytellers, we're always looking for, for ideas, you know, and, and, uh, and when inspiration hits, you want to you wanna kind of delve in and, and, and uh, make some discoveries. So I, I think I might have uh, spoken to Ian about it pretty early on, and we started talking about how to collaborate on some kind of pandemic idea, you know, something based on, on romance. I think, yeah, I think he and I were both single at the time and just sort of thinking about, like, oh, okay, what, what's, what's, what's romance going to be like in these, in, in these times? And so we started bouncing the script back and forth. Uh, and that was around March 2020, you know, and so it, it didn't, so it didn't take long, you know, and so we started filming in April. So, uh, yeah, so pretty much when it started, we, you know, when everything started closing down, that's when we just started, um, uh, started writing the screenplay. With, uh, if you were shooting in April, was there a concern at the time how naive we were that the pandemic might end before you're done filming? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ian, do you want to take, take that one? Sure. Um, I, I felt like there was maybe one or two days about three quarters of the way through the shoot where we thought that um, it kept on getting pushed out how long the pandemic was going to last. You know, oh, it'll only be two weeks and then it'll only be a month and it'll only be two months and then it'll only be six months. And I don't know, you know, you're, you're rooting for the pandemic to be over, obviously. And you're also still wanting to be relevant, but no matter what, I think one of our best reviews was somebody said, you know, no matter when you decide to come back and revisit this film, it's the perfect little snapshot of what it was like right there in the beginning of the pandemic, what we were all feeling, what we were all going for. So in, in that way, I think we're going to be timeless. Um, you know, we're, we're interesting creatures and whenever the time comes to reflect on the darker, weirder times and, and, um, I just had a friend of mine that I met up with yesterday. Uh, he, him and his girlfriend just watched the film and they were like, this was every part of us online trying to date in the beginning of the pandemic. And like, you nailed it perfectly. It just the, the awkwardness and all the discussions that were being had. And uh, so, um, yeah, I guess that uh, answers that question as best we can. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I wish I, I wish I had as much luck as, as uh, you know, as as you and Sorrel did, you know, <laughs> in the film, because the, the the realities of online dating is still pretty, still really awkward. Anyway, <laughs> it's true. Mm -hmm. It it is interesting to make a film about everyone being stuck inside, but you certainly took advantage of the circumstances, utilizing video chat for much of the film with very few actors in the same space at the same time. So how did you separate out crews as well to kind of minimize contact? Or were you kind of faking that where everyone's actually in the same room, but you're actually like cameras at opposite ends. So it looks like you're, you're on opposite ends of town. Cool. Yeah. Steve, I think Steve can, um, can talk, talk on that. Well, I, I thought it was pretty interesting because right when we hit that, um, there was only a few of us that were actually in Portland. Um, a lot of the other actors were <clears throat> in California, New Zealand. You know, there was a few of us that were in Portland. So it made it, it actually made it really easy to connect with everybody. And, um, you know, everybody's kind of stuck in their own spot. So um, they had plenty of time, plenty of free time to jump on a call. So that made it nice. <laughs> Was it also kind of weird doing like rehearsals over Zoom as opposed to in person and and all that? 
we didn't really do do rehearsals. You know, I, as I, uh, um, I'm trying to remember. Did uh, oh, actually, no, actually, you did. Uh, Tiffany and Ian, you guys had rehearsals over Zoom, didn't you? Yeah, I also had a so, few with you in the beginning too, John. Uh, I don't know if you remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it, though. Yeah, um, yeah, I'd forgotten about that. So had this cast and crew worked together previously? Uh, and what was the onset experience like with all of the added restrictions? Everyone knows it's hard enough to make a film, much less make a film when everyone has to be in their own little sector and you've got all these added uh, precautions that you have to throw in uh, just to be able to film. So what was that whole experience like? Um, I mean, it was it was like, uh, like, like, for instance, I remember like, you know, Ian and I sitting... Uh, well, because they, because there was the whole thing of like, you know, is it safe to do this or that? Should we wear masks? You know, even even just meeting at some point, we were like, hey, we should probably just meet in person uh, after we've had a after we've like quarantined ourselves for. I think at that time it was like two weeks, and so I think Ian and I might have like waited two weeks before we met up. You know, something around that time. It was close to that, if not two weeks exactly. It might have been ten days, but we got together. We're like, hey, we're going to be in, you know in a room together anyway. And so, uh, and then we started just kind of, that's where we started piecing, he and I started piecing things together, like, you know, kind of getting together on, um, uh, on like what, what props we were going to use and like even getting together about casting, you know, I hadn't worked with Tiffany before, but I'd met Tiffany. And so, um, uh, um, and, uh, Steve and I had worked on a project before, Ian and I had worked on a project before. So, we were really just ca calling upon our friends, you know, um, everyone else in the film, Bruce, uh, who played uh, Ian's father, we'd, uh, I worked with him on three or four other movies, you know, or something like that, you know, uh, Jimmy I'd worked with on another film. And so, uh, Marianne, you know, the, the, uh, the, the phone call at the very beginning of the film. So we were really like, you know, I don't know, since, since, since they were really like unique times, like we wanted to be, uh, you know, we wanted to call upon our friends, people we were familiar with, who we already had trust with, you know, and uh, and then when we started piece together, like the things, kind of the unknowns, like the, okay, what's our, what's our production design going to be? Like, okay, we'll take the things I already have in my apartment. And then we found this one online store that we fell in love with. Can you remember what it's called, Ian? But we started ordering Sh stuff. Sharp Shirter. <laughs> Yeah, sharp shirt. We started ordering stuff from there, and we're like, you know, can we have a license to use all this art in our movie? And the and the designer uh, owner of the company was like, yeah, go for it. You can use everything, and so that's why, you know, all of our production design is basically from that company. And it's like, you know, kind of funny little posters and shirts and stuff. I don't know. It was it worked out pretty well, actually. You know, right. Well, Ian, you mentioned the word awkward earlier, and that stands out to me because dating is one of the most awkward things to do in life. And uh, this film does capture well the um, the process of, uh, I'm not sure if everyone else had this experience, but any, any time of being on a date, being constantly paranoid, thinking, don't say the wrong word, don't say the wrong word, that's that's going to make things awkward. And yet this film... And I say this in the most loving way possible. Uh, it, it may, in fact, have the most cringeworthy clothes-on non-sex sex scene ever put on film, <laughs> which I, I think is is great. I, I mean that as a compliment. Uh, that had that had to be really difficult to shoot and keep a straight face. Did anyone get like a serious case of giggles trying to stay in character or crew, trying hard not to screw up that that scene? I was actually surprised at how smooth that scene went. Um, uh, John and Steve spent the morning setting up the shots. Uh, I think having two cameras rolling, one on each of us in a close-up, um, helped us get the scene pretty much in the bag within three or four takes. And I, I guess the awkwardness went from... Both Tiffany and I had envisioned the scene with our eyes closed and kind of explaining what's happening. And John had the brilliant idea, well, what if your eyes are open? That'll be more <laughs> intimate. And both both Tiffany and I went, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> and uh, that 
level of intimacy slash awkwardness that comes with eyes open connection, um, I think, <laughs> made the scene authentic in in a way where the giggles didn't have a chance because we were kind of like just going through the intimacy and uh, it really paid off in that cr- cringeworthy, amazing way. <laughs> Tiffany, what's, what's yeah. your take on, on the, uh, the most cringeworthy non-sex <laughs> clothes on sex scene? Uh, yeah. Well, I was, I was nervous about it, but at the same time, like we, we were able to like go over lines while everything was being set up and like, just kind of get into a rhythm. Um, and yeah, it was it was super comfortable. The you know everybody made the the situation comfortable. It was also my first day on set with them, so that was also really interesting. Um, and I think like added to that scene as well. Um, yeah, it was just really it was really fun and and awkwardly wonderful. <laughs> yeah. The uh, yeah. The- Oh, sorry. Go, go ahead. Uh, I just said yeah. <laughs> I, I was gonna say by by that point in the film, uh, you know, the it's, it was mainly just the four of us spending a lot of time together. And by the time we got to that scene, I think everybody was just so comfortable with one another that I mean, you guys went through it like it was nothing. It was pretty smooth. Yeah, I, I think at that time, you like you know, me and me and Steve had our own like weird gibberish language at that point spending so much time together just getting just getting weird and you know making a movie in, in a small room in the pandemic is this where we filmed most of the movie was in my was in my uh the place i i, I lived in at the time which i don't know the square footage but it was small it was tiny it was hot and i remember like we were just and we we had to get uh like a case of uh of uh lacroix or something like every day just to like just to keep cool you know? Oh yeah, because it was um, shot during like really hot, some really hot days. Because my my apartment was really hot too. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, it was so hot during that during that time. But yeah, that was the first time we, you know, we'd seen Tiffany on that on that day, and uh, you know, like you know, like they were saying, it all it all came together like really like pretty 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 easily. I think. Um, Typically, I, I, you know, going back to the rehearsal situation, like, uh, typically, I, I, in the past, I haven't liked rehearsals for some reason, and I, I guess I felt like, oh, that takes away from, like, the reality or the realness or the, the newness or whatever, and, and I think, I mean, this is one of the projects, one of a couple of projects recently where I'm like, oh, yeah, rehearsals are totally necessary, and, uh, you know, and if you can have them, like, they're, they're, they're real um, beneficial to have them, so, anyway. So uh, I don't know what it was like for you two to, you know, to actually rehearse by Zoom. But was that any different for the two of you? So. Just felt like running lines. So yeah. luckily, uh, it worked very similar to running lines in person. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it, it. Luckily, that wasn't one of the the difficult hangups of doing it virtually. It it seemed to go pretty smooth. Yeah, I've kind of noticed that. I'm like, I'm like getting used to like. You know, I've, I've done a few acting classes and like a movement class virtually, and I'm able still to get sort of like connected, you know, it's kind of interesting, you know, I mean, I mean, I, I know I realized we made a whole movie about that, but I'm just saying like, <laughs> you know, in, in, in my own life, it's, it's rang true. I've been able to like truly connect with people and, you know, share laughs, tears and, and love with people, you know, virtually it's been pretty, pretty amazing. Well, at at this point, everyone is a Zoom expert, right? Uh, how we, we yeah, really yeah. knew how to use it a year ago, and now everyone's like a master of, of even grandmas. Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm still I'm still forgetting to, to click click off the mute button, but <laughs> I'll, I'll figure it out. <laughs> the uh, mm-hmm. the odd times that you filmed this actually resulted in some really fortuitous sets. I, I mean, like you got some deserted street shots in Portland that under normal circumstances you would never be able to get since the film was about the pandemic uh, and you were filming during the pandemic. It, it seems like it would actually be advantageous. You'd, you'd normally have to file a whole lot of permits to try to replicate some of those circumstances that existed in public settings that you were able to film in. Right. Yeah, definitely. 
definitely. I mean, we, we actually caught it along the tail end of that, too. I mean, there was about two, three-week period, maybe, um, where streets were empty. No one, no one was coming outdoors. I mean, as far as we knew, it was this airborne thing that could kill anybody. I don't know. I don't know. Um, at, at, its, at, at its most extreme, but, you know, but um, we didn't, you know, we didn't know. But so a lot of people were, you know, were doing, you know, as, as they should at the time, they're staying indoors. And so we went out. You know, you'd go out before we made the movie, uh, before before we started shooting, it was those, I wish we would have caught some of those earlier days when there was nobody, even on the freeway. I lived right off the freeway and the, free, the freeway was empty during the day, you know, rush hour. And I was like, oh my God, this is nuts. But so we kind of had to film uh, um, when people started coming outdoors again, like we filmed on a Sunday. Um, two Sundays in a row, I think, early, like 5.30, 6 a.m., and we managed to find some of that remote sort of isolation that we were looking for, and it was pretty cool, especially in the downtown area. And uh, and um, I know I wish I would have had more of them in the movie, but we only had a, a limited number of them, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, Ian's drone shots were, I think, captured a lot of that sort of desolate um, terrain, desolate downtown. It's pretty cool. Well, there, there's also uh, one of those days we spent most of the day with just Ian doing his dance all through different locations of downtown that are completely isolated. So it was unreal to go to these places that are usually gridlocked, and here's Ian in the middle of the street dancing. <laughs> yeah, there was, a, there was a dance sequence we cut out of the film. I, 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 yeah, uh, and it was, I don't know, it might have been like five or eight minutes long, but it's just you know, just Ian dancing throughout the streets of Portland, the empty streets of Portland. It's, I don't know. It was pretty cool. And when, when we first shot it, like we were editing the movie as we went along and at the very beginning of the, one of the first few cuts had it in there, you know, and it was pretty like, you know, we we're like, Oh, this is what kind of movie this is going to be, I guess. <laughs> okay. Cool. You know, but they ended up not making it in the final cut, but it was still, it was really, it was pretty cool to capture it, you know? Yeah. So it's never like a, deleted scenes or whatever we'll put that in there we should make the so, official music video <laughs> yeah. sure yeah mm -hmm. so has this film been uh, making the rounds at screenings yet and if so what has the reaction been uh, are people kind of thankful that there's a lighter side of the pandemic on display or are people just like so sick of it and just want to move on or a little bit a little yeah. bit of both <laughs> well thanks for saying thanks for saying the lighter side of it because we are definitely wanting didn't want it to be melodramatic we definitely wanted it to be light as light as it could be you know and and uh we're you know i'm certainly yeah, i'll speak for myself i'm certainly not a writer of traditional sort of comedies you know but circumstantial sort of lightness like what this film had i think is something i do i do like um to have in my film at some point and and so the the, the reaction uh we've only had uh, i think one other we you know i think we've we've only um screened it the Portland International Film Festival and then the Klamath, you know, so other than that, um, the reactions have been pretty good. The reviews have been pretty positive. I think you know, I made 10 features. I think, I think this is, this one has the higher, the highest Rotten Tomato score out of all my movies for, for some, for some reason, you know, and, uh, another Rotten Tomatoes to be all end all. It's not, you know, but, you know, but somebody looking from the outside in, you know, might see that and be like, oh, wow. Yeah. Like this, Movie, movies heavily, re, you know, it's reviewed really, really well, you know. Uh, so people, people have liked it. And there's some people that said, oh, too soon, you know. And I guess there's like a small part of me, maybe that was like, okay, maybe we did this, you know, I don't know. I, I wish it would have come out way earlier. I, I've talked, I've talked to, to some friends about that. But I mean, when it came out, it was, you know, it was fine, you know. Um, uh, but, but, you know, it, what's pretty cool is we, we were, I think, one of the first, not the first, feature film to come out that was about like a you know a feature film about a romance during the pandemic you know so i know and that's pretty cool you know uh, um, ha hashtag too soon and yet at the same time people need to think about what can you actually film when everyone's on lockdown the, this this is probably it as far as what you the, this or maybe doing animation or like the only things people could actually totally. work on for for a stretch totally so. and and to be honest it was really like therapeutic for for, for I think all of us at the time, um, I think it was a really like kind of got you know, kind of got lost in it for a good a good you know, leading up to it in production and then afterwards I, I became obsessed about the post production and I was less concerned about 
you know, wrapping myself up into the, you know, into the, the pressures of being in a pandemic and my family and et cetera, et cetera. So it was nice to be, you know, it was the therapeutic aspect of the film for sure. I think for all, for all of us, I don't want to speak for everyone, but definitely for me. Uh, for the uh, for the cast members uh, Tiffany and Ian, uh, what was your favorite aspect of your character, and how much of yourself was in the character that you played? Ian, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, uh, let's see. John and I wrote the movie together, so I, I say that you know the character Jason is a as a hodgepodge of John and I, and then about you know maybe. 30% John, 30% me, and then the rest is kind of the narrative. You, you got to give the character some hangups and some quirks and some stuff to work through, you know, because John and I are pretty well-rounded, squared away human beings with no flaws. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just, uh, we kind of uh, tossed around all the, all the things that were bumming us out or making us feel awkward Uh about the early stage of the pandemic and or being single and that was kind of a combination of that and um and then the kind of once once the character is in a story and comes alive they start making a few of their own decisions which is kind of cool um and and john could probably speak more to that because he did the first pass and then we worked together to you know just dial in dialogue and and scenario um but I think my favorite part about the character that is the most similar to me is that when times get hard, um, I, I'll just go dance. And, you know, dance was the earliest form of therapy I ever found for myself growing up, um, hitting the, you know, techno dance clubs of the 90s and just like losing my mind on the dance floor for five hours at a time was the best therapy ever. And so incorporating that into the character and then, you know, looping Tiffany's character in and getting her to dance with me. Um, that's, that's what I did in the, in the actual pandemic in the basement. I put up some huge speakers, some laser lights, a fog machine. And I was like, eyes closed. The only guy on the dance floor losing my mind for hours at a time, just as, you know, a way to let go of all the energy. So, uh, yeah, that's, that was my favorite. How about you, Tiff? Um, well, I really felt connected to Sorel in a lot of ways, um, particularly just during the pandemic and like dealing with the fear of it all. And also, you know, dating on the dating apps during that time, we actually used my dating app for Sorel for that, for that one scene in the beginning, um, uh, of him swiping through and seeing my stuff. Um, and also, we incorporated a, a few things that were very, very me as well. Like there's a scene where I'm um, working on a magic deck. If you, I don't know if you caught that, if you know Magic the Gathering at all, but there's, there's a scene where I'm, I'm talking to Jason about um, just like fears and things. And I'm like distracting myself with, you know, working on this magic deck and, you know, sorting my magic cards. And that's something that I... I do as well. Um, but yeah, I just, I loved this character and, and I really felt um, very connected to her and it, it was really just a wonderful experience. So uh, it was mentioned before that there were a couple things cut out of the film, uh, largely dance sequences, but were there uh, any sort of bloopers during the course of production or really memorable moments from the film that still stand out? Yeah, there's there's a ton of. I mean, there's one instance where we're trying to get Steve to dance. Steve wouldn't dance, you know. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, we we have tons. We we I wish we had more BTS. But I'm trying to think. If there's any bloopers, actual bloopers of like, besides all the dance sequences. Um, well, you kept something uh, in the movie that was like a dog pooping in the background. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There you go. There, people always point that out. I've had people send that to me as though, like, yeah. hey, did you realize this was happening? Like, <laughs> did you see this? I'm like, yeah, I did. I did when we were filming, and I loved it. That's why we kept it in there. But whenever <laughs> whenever, whenever, uh, whenever, Jason's looking, um, he's waiting for Sorrel to, um, she's, they're supposed to meet at the park. He's looking for her, and then he's waiting for her, and, like, you know, it's at that moment where he's about to give up, and then right in the corner of the right-hand side of the screen, there's a dog. Just by himself, there's not even an owner or anything nearby. Just a dog standing there, like looking almost towards camera, and just starts scooping. 
and then just walks away, you know, and it was kind of like, I don't know, anybody who sees it's like, oh my God, it's so, that's so how he's feeling right now or something, you know, <laughs> and so, uh, it's pretty cool. That's a pretty, that's, I think that's a good call. That's probably our best blooper or best like happy accident, I guess you could say. It, it's your whole... your version of like a Fellini film where there's like a cowboy yeah. in the corner eating eating pudding and a clown with a balloon crying. <laughs> like yeah. this means something that's... somehow. What does the dog right. pooping mean? That's so, that's so funny. Yeah, I wish I wish we had like been that specific about it, right? <laughs> Planned it way ahead. You know, <laughs> you know, but nope, that wasn't that wasn't the case. You know, I, I got a, I was, I was, I had a uh, Q&A about another film I worked on recently and they were asking me about, you know, like, wow, I, what, what do the white walls mean? I was so, throughout the entire film, that was so, that's so brilliant. What, what was behind it? And I was like, nothing, you know, <laughs> like, absolutely nothing. It was just an accident. Oh, and like, it was almost like their disappointment of, you know, <laughs> that wasn't the answer that they were hoping to, hoping to, hoping for me to say. Well, let's get uh, everyone's final takes on uh, uh, each of you, what you hope people take away from watching Love in Dangerous Times. Tiffany, why don't we start with you? Um, the thing that I really hope is taken away, no matter when you watch it, if the pandemic is completely over or not, but just hopefulness um, that there's like good people in the world and I felt that within the movie and also working on this with these people was like, it was, a, for me, it was very hopeful and yeah, that's, that's really what I hope people take away is, is hope and, um, and a sense of community that, that you can find community even in the hardest times. Great. And Steve. Um, <clears throat> I just hope that uh, people see that you don't have to be, you know, you can have that distance from one another, but still be able to connect um, really deep. You know, you don't have to be in the same room, you can be far apart and still be able to connect with people. Right. Ian, what do you hope people take away from seeing this film? Uh, catharsis. Um, no one, like it's, you feel like you're all alone going through this bummer moment all by yourself or with a select few. And there's, there's some sort of catharsis for me to know that I'm not the only one going through that hard time. And that gives me some levity and some connectedness to everyone else who's, who's suffering that thing. Um, and then, yeah, just the, the invitation to still get out there and meet people by any means necessary. Um, even if you don't love online dating, you know, whatever, whatever it is that might be blocking you from connecting, uh, you know, get out there and connect. It, it definitely helps me a lot. Fantastic. And John. Yeah. I, I don't have anything profound to say, but, um, you know, Mike Seppert, who made the, uh, uh, the soundtrack, you know, I talked to him about, you know, I want there to be like sort of like these digitizing little sounds, you know, that that are like um, it's a sort of the sound of like people connecting through through virtual space, you know. So like he came up with this little sequencer sound that's in the soundtrack that's like it's like sort of like a little sequence sound, you know. So like you know that uh, so I guess like you know what I'd like people to take away maybe is like the you know the like you know to echo what what everyone else said you know the that you know we need connection and there's there's kind of no no boundaries or no there's nothing that can that can get in the way of uh of people seeking people you know for love uh romantic reasons or otherwise you know so uh so, uh, love conquers all types well, thank you, everyone, for making this awkward film and for joining <laughs> us today. Uh, Love in Dangerous Times will be screened on Saturday, September 18th at 10.30 a.m. in our Northern Features category and available on demand all week.